Hey, hey, everybody, Brad Linder back at you again with another dose of the Daily Sketch Card Show. And I know this isn't a sketch card, per se, but this is the uh, finished penciling for the uh, Fighting American piece that I did yesterday. Just so you guys know it's there. And uh, I'm going to take a second and share this over with the page so everybody can see it. So bear with me just a moment. And uh, we'll get started. So, sharing with the page, sharing with the channel, and we are good. Cool. Okay. Uh, just shared this. So, if you guys are catching up with me just now, uh, joining it, it is another daily sketch card show uh, piece that I'm doing. And I'm your happy comic artist host of this little project here we call the Brother Leonard Creating Comics show. Um, this is The Fighting American. So enough screwing around with that. <laughs> I, I'm, in a, I'm in a great mood today and having a blast. So bear with me. Um, it is awesome. This is The Fighting American here. And I'm going to, like I said, show this one more time for these finished pencils. And I'm going to be inking on this. So uh, we're going to have some fun with it. So that's what I got. I'm just going to start right in here. And since this is for um, a piece for the show, I'm using something that I use for more common pieces. Um, I'm using my Pilot. I love this pen. Uh, it has uh, Indian ink in it. It's got a great gel ink in it, which is uh, Indian black, and I love it. It does not fade on me. It hasn't yet. Doesn't mean it won't at some point. But as of right now, I'm a happy camper with it. So that's what we got. Going to use my blotter here from yesterday so I don't uh, get grit on the page here. Now, sometimes I like to use finer nibs and, uh, you know, traditional pins and whatnot, but I'm more of a technical pin person. I don't like to use uh, nibs as much because I'm heavy-handed with my penciling, as you can see, and I'm heavy-handed on my inks as well, and I prefer not to uh, jumble up a page with a bunch of heavy content. Uh, so, you know, I don't want to waterlog the inks, and I like to keep the pencils clean and simple, So, uh, and then keep the inks on top of that just as not necessarily as much as being a tracer, you know. I do like the line weight control, but um, I don't like to oversaturate inks and make them look like a coloring book either. That bothers me. So I tend not to do that. I like to ink what's there, but I also embellish a little bit with the curve and stuff to make sure what's going on. And add thickness where it's required. So... I like it, I like it, but uh, for the most part, I just enjoy inking what's there, because when I draw, I tend to leave a lot of that, you know, that heavy weight on the, the pencils itself, so I don't have a lot of heavy lifting to do with it when I ink my own stuff, but I like to leave some wiggle room for, you know, an inker to be creative. I don't like there's a difference, and I don't like inkers that really go in and, and overwork it. Um, I don't believe that inkers should draw, you know, redraw stuff. But, um, I mean, if it's jacked up and it's a last-minute thing and they're covering your butt, that's one thing, you know. Um, I was just having a discussion with this um, with a buddy of mine yesterday, and, you know, I'm okay with them correcting stuff, but the thing is, my philosophy on it is if you're a penciler, you should have, you know, to do it over. The editor should make you do it over. If there's corrections to be made, you shouldn't be the penciler on the project if you're messing up that much to where an inker has to come in and save your butt. But once in a while, you know, you'll make mistakes and things uh, don't go right, and I understand that. And due to scheduling and stuff, a lot of people will allow for the inker to do work like that. But for me personally, I think that falls back to the editor and the inker. I mean, the uh, ed editor and the pencil are not on the inker. So, you know, the inker should be able to be there to embellish and make the pencils permanent. 
make the pencils um, cross uh, crunching on my throat drop here. Excuse that, but um, they should uh, be able to embellish on the pencils that are there, and should be able to bring that to life and focus on enhancing the work and sharpening it up and making it polished and smooth rather than having to mess with uh, correcting a penciler that didn't do their job. So, you know, if you're an inker and you have to do that, my apologies as, as a penciler for that. But uh, if, uh, if you're one of those guys that are out there complaining, you know, maybe you should uh, work on your artwork a little better. You know, do your penciling a little better so they don't have to embellish and change. Uh, granted, on the other side of that coin, I don't want an inker to go in and change the lighting or the control of my artwork, you know, so I don't want them to go do that. And uh, we have kind of a mutual responsibility there to get our jobs done. But in the same token, it gets a little rough when people start cutting on other people's artwork and manipulating it because there's a difference between embellishment and manipulation or alteration of the original piece. So keep that in mind if you're an artist. But, um, you yeah, know, it is what it is. So, But, uh, you know, <clears throat> I wanted to touch a base on something, too, um, that crosses over into marketing as well as into art. And, uh, from you know, from my marketing friends out there, you guys will be able to pick up on this. But there is a, a common thread lately um, that's going around where people are saying, well, I, you know, I hate marketers and I don't want to be a marketer and this, that, and the other. I'm a consultant and, you know, I work directly with my clients and do all this stuff. Okay. There's a real fine line there between being, and take it from a freelancer as an artist that's done any other projects other than just his own. There's a lot of stuff going on with that and it falls into that, uh, that misconception. Okay. Um, if you are a consultant, that means that you have done your due diligence in your business and built your brand up and have work experience in that industry that you're consulting, quote unquote, for, okay? And when you come up and say, well, I'm a consultant and I have 20 clients that I charge so much a month to do the work for, there's a big difference with that. There's a big problem with that, okay? Because what you're doing is there's a difference in, the, in being a freelancer that does the work as in done for you because they're doing, you're, you're hiring, uh, the client is hiring you to do the project for them. That's done for you work and you are a laborer. You there, therefore are a freelancer. Don't confuse that with being a consultant where you show the client how to do the project or the process or come in and do it for them as a teacher and show them how to do it for themselves and come in with that business experience versus having a job with freelancing. Okay, there's a difference. If you live by your clients, by how many clients you have, you are a freelancer. You're not a consultant. There's a difference. If you live by how many sales you make on products and services that you produce and then consult as a sideline to share that experience with people, then you're a consultant. There's a difference. There is a definite difference. And if anybody says otherwise, that's fine. If you want to argue that point, that's your opinion. But I mean, the fact is that if you're living client to client and paycheck to paycheck, you're a freelancer. I'm sorry. It, it is 100% true. You are not a consultant and you don't need to call yourself that um, because it's a misnomer. And when you go in and you represent yourself that way, you are falsely representing yourself to that person as someone that is expected to do uh, knowledgeable effort and get that done and not work on the fly for just a job. You know, there's a big difference. So have that understanding and, and take it from, like I said, take it from somebody that was, that is a professional freelancer. I freelance for comic stuff all the time because I do what I love with this. <clears throat> but when it comes to my personal business, that's a totally different thing when I consult. Um, you know, that, that is a huge difference in not only pay scale, but effort, time, uh, 
obligation to the job. There's a ton of difference there. So, you know, understand what you're coming in for and what you're doing. And don't misrepresent yourself because you'll get in a pickle real quick. And because of the fact that you're doing a job differently, you're, you'll get overwhelmed and you'll get overrun. I've seen so many people put themselves in that spot and say they're one thing and they're not. And then they choke out because of the fact. You know, and I've had people bring me on teams for projects that have flopped because of the fact that people say, well, I'm a project manager and you know what, they're not. And you don't find out about it, that they don't have their crap together until you're halfway through the project. And it comes to you to save their butt because you know more than they do. And they're supposed to be the project manager leading this project. Uh, I've seen it many, many times. Don't let it happen to you because it will. And it will bite you in the butt. It will bite you big time. So save yourself that grief. If you're a freelancer and you do done for you work and your job uh, is paid for by that, then say you're a freelancer. You know, don't go off and represent yourself as a cl as a consultant to get more clients because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to get clients that you're uh, not equipped to handle, and you're going to choke yourself out. So. Same thing whether you're an artist, <clears throat> excuse me, same thing whether you're an artist, um, you know, a marketer, whatever, you will kill your business by doing that. Um, just hands down. So be very careful and cautious about that when you're doing it because it'll come back. All your clients will run away. So, yeah, I hear that all the time. I, I'm a consultant, you know, and no, you're not. You're a freelancer. And that's cool, but accept it so you can do a better job at it. <clears throat> so big difference, big difference. Now, as far as this goes, I am pushing a uh, switching gears here back to the art, as it were, and uh, if you can call this that. But, um, you know, the funny thing about this is, I like to make this look like it's a guy in a suit, and that's that's as far as I go with the realism. Um, I don't do photorealism or semi-realism to where it looks like a photograph. You know, you put in all the dark shadows and every muscle and fiber is there and all that. I, I don't go off as that far. The way my realism in this works, the semi-realism that I use, I use a cartoon or animated effect, but I still use a ultra-dynamic drawing style which means I put in all the little details to make it pop and that's that's what I like to do I like to section it to where it comes across that way <clears throat> Rusty thanks man I appreciate it I had to stop and say hi to everybody and see what was going on because um, this is live on Facebook right now and uh, we'll be on YouTube as well it's recording over on the channel so that's fun. Uh, going to be bringing out some marketing material this afternoon. I'm happy and pleased with that. So uh, going to be getting that up soon. So that should be enjoyable. <clears throat> but we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, I wanted to do this piece to make up for, you know, not being on a lot I try to do two or three pieces a week, and uh, like I said yesterday, due to the family, uh, personal thing, I wasn't able to uh, come on like I, I normally do, and I wanted to get that done and out of the way for you guys so we can have a piece that is uh, a little bit above average for what we do here, so uh, a little bit more formidable. I've got about maybe, I don't know, maybe an hour into this this is an 11 by 17 and I've got maybe an hour into this already I have 45 minutes on the live and then about another 15 20 minutes maybe maybe on that afterward drawing the rest of this out just kind of hammering it out and um, I draw much faster of course when I don't have to talk but uh, I like hanging out with you guys so I'm not going to change that 
and my deadlines are pretty solid right now, so I don't have to worry about that. Everything's caught up. I'm going to be working on um, Catman number, jeez, uh, I've got, <clears throat> let's see, Catman Evolution number, da, 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 number six today. So, Catman Evolution number six for Firestone Comics. Number four is about to be released. And number six, uh, I'm doing the cover for number six today to finish it up. And uh, I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it. Took a little bit longer being a one-man army, you know, on everything that I do. And um, I'm okay with that. I like it. I get it done. Um, I get to do a heavier format. So uh, I really, really like doing it, and we'll see where it goes from there. But <clears throat> I just hope you guys dig the book. I got messaged. Uh, the funny thing was, right before I came on, I sent this around to like 10 or 15 people, and it got uh, it got private message blitzed around the uh, the old interweb of Facebook. And uh, cracked me up to no end because I instantly had like 150 messages. It was nuts. So asking me when I was going to go on and do it and whatever. So I just came on. No warning, no, uh, no explanation, just came on. Hey. <laughs> All right. We've got this cowl going on, and this thing is looking really solid. I am enjoying it. Um, one of the funny things about it, you know, working for comics and then crossing over into Internet marketing and things like that and <clears throat> doing both of these heavy industry businesses, it's really intense, man. Because... Uh, Whenever you cross over, it all it all interacts and relates on the internet either way. But one of the things I've found is, you know, where comic books uh, reside, so many people say, "Well, I'm in an independent creator market. I'm in, a, you know, I'm an independent creator." And and the funny thing is, is they're griping about the mainstream industry not taking care of them. But yet, when you ask them what they've done, oh well. I'm working on a project. I'm working on a project, and it's just like, well, what? Where is it? What? What have you done uh, to be complaining about the market not supporting you? You know, what did you do last month? What did you do this month? What are you doing next month? And they have no clue. And it turns out that they're producing less than one page a week. And it's just, I understand you got to pay your bills and stuff and do the day job thing sometimes. But, man, if you're not willing to do three pages a week professionally, you are wasting your time. Because professional comic artist, nine times out of ten, I know a lot of people like Jim Lee and all that say that they do one page a day and whatever. But you know what the market standard is? Three to five pages a day for an independent artist. And uh, most mainstream artists are required to do more. But the thing is, they get paid better, and they're slower, and they're on the exclusive contract. So they say, well, I can produce a page a day at comic quality, you know, at, at Marvel quality and or DC quality, and that's what they do. And they get to sit on their butts and put in, you know, 10 hours a day on a page, which I totally respect the effort. However, when you can draw three or four pages a day, average like the old dogs used to man there's a difference why this industry isn't growing there's a huge example of why it isn't flourishing it's because you know you guys want to say oh i'm a comic artist and i did a comic book six years ago but nobody wants to do the effort to make the comic stature you know and i know i talk about this a lot but it's true 
And then when you go into marketing, everybody's spinning their wheels talking about, oh, I want to be a consultant. I want to be a freelancer. I want to be this. I want to be that. I want to be a consultant. I want to be a speaker. I want to be an author. I want to do this and I want to do that. And the cool thing about that is same thing, except in the reverse. They're doing all this effort and all this work, but getting nothing produced where the artists on the comic side are doing no work <clears throat> and producing one or two pieces. And, you know, um, you have to get out of that, that uh, portfolio traditional artist mentality when you work in comics because it's not the same. And marketing is uh, it, it's not the same beast it used to be either. You know, you can't just go out there and say, I, I write a book, I'm famous, that's it. You have to put in the effort in the social game because it's all about social marketing these days. And um, so many people don't want to put in the effort for that. So in the same regard, social media is pretty much the same thing as independent comics um, on that business platform perspective. Because so many people don't put in the effort. And it's like, oh, I'm not on Facebook. I don't blog. I don't do this. I don't do that. I don't do this. Well, then you're not going to get your work seen and you're not in the in the social game of being connected to people all the time. So you're going to lose your butt. And I see it across the board. And it sucks. And, you know, I'm here every day, man. So I know what it's like. I know how bad it sucks. I know it's labor intensive. But if you want to keep it to where your business thrives and your work builds and your reputation builds and you get the work done you have to be there to do the work you have to be there to do it so you know on the same token that with the comic stuff and the marketing lining up what I'm saying here is that you know artists don't produce on, on a daily basis and uh, in their work in their comics and their lineup of content to show and in the same token, we have problems with uh, with a lot of these other artists in the the marketing industry coming along and saying the same thing. You know, they're like, "Well, I don't want to do social media. I don't want to do all that work. I don't want to do a blog." Well, if you're not willing to do all of that and be in the presence of the clients and the the market that you're working on, you're sitting there dead in the water and you don't even know it. And you're giving it all up because you're not producing and you wonder why you're not successful. Same thing, same thing. You got to get off your keister and get out there and produce. And if you're not producing, you need to get in there in the world of production. Because the number one fault for people not getting paid is they have nothing to show. So, you know, you can't say, oh, oh I'm a professional comic artist and I want to show... Well, when did you do this portfolio? Oh, it's been, it took me about six months. Well, how many pages are in here? Eight. What? You know? And then on the same token, though, you've got the marketer uh, going out there and saying, well, you know, I want you to pay me money to consult for you and to do all this stuff. Well, what have you got? Nothing. You know, what products have you done? What customers have you worked with? What clients have you worked with? Um <clears throat> Who have you built up? You know, what, do you, what is your social proof to show that you do that? And so many people fall to the wayside and say, oh, I got this, I got that, I got this, you know. And they haven't done anything. But yet they want the, um, you know, they want instant gratification of people, uh, come worship me. I'm a false god type mentality because of the fact that I want you to pet my ego because of the fact that I say it's true, that makes it true, and that's it. And they don't understand, you know, uh, you shoot yourself in the foot with that real quick. You have to have an authority position. You have to have um, a real backing and following for this stuff, and you have to be able to produce the work, you know. I show that I can draw every single day that I come on here and do this. And I'm drawing every day whether you see it or not. So... You know, that's, that's the big thing. I, I'm an artist every single day. I'm a writer every single day. And that's part of uh, why I'm so happy that this blog is just about done so I can get it out there and get it going. So much content. So much. So. The thoughts scary. Things that make you go blue. So. 
you got to get out there and get it going, man. So if you want to prove who you are and what you're about, get out there and knock something out and show them. I'm an artist. Ding, look at my artwork. I'm a marketer. Ding, look at my material. Look at my training. Look at my content. Look at my stuff. Look at my results. And it can't be fake, you know. We're putting the kibosh on that these days. We as the customer base that consume this stuff because, you know, um, if you're going to put out a comic book and it sucks, they're going to let you know it real quick because they're not going to support it. But on the same token, though, with the uh, publishers coming at you, they don't support independent artists anymore. They don't support artists, period, anymore. They don't have submission forms because they, it never worked because they never looked at them. They trashed them all. It was to keep you occupied so you didn't bother the editors. And... You know, it's like, submit to us. We've got submission guidelines and blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, they never looked at them. DC and Marvel never looked at them. You know where they went? They went to the they went to a special, uh, uh, the hottest editor they had, their incinerator in the bottom of the WB building. Same thing with Marvel. They would roll them over to the uh, studio. Uh, they would roll them over to the studio building across the way and put them in the uh, furnace down in the basement. So you think about that one. They didn't even look at them. They were a liability to look at them. That's why they have the waiver now, you know. <clears throat> because so many people are going, hey, man, you looked at our stuff. You had editors look at our stuff. And uh, once in a while, an editor would take a package, of, a pile of them, and sort through them. Because that's, you know, that's the way it originally worked. Because they did have a plan of using them. They would go in and have an editor when they had 10 minutes. They would go in and say, okay, I'm going to go do this. You know, you, you draw stick duty, match stick duty here, and you get the short straw and have to go do 30 minutes or an hour of uh, submission sorting. And whatever came across the desk came across the desk, and whatever didn't, didn't. And nine times out of ten, they would look at your stuff, and then they would get an idea for their book and say, oops, you know, that that'd be great for my book. And then, you know, six months later, they'd get inspired by it. And then they'd say it was their idea and their concept, and they realized they were taking stuff, so they had to put out a submission waiver. So that's the reason it wasn't accepted as submissions, because they were too close to conceptualizing ideas from the bullpen that were relevant and related to whatever similar standard that those were. So, you know, you got to think about that stuff. So many artists lost so, and writers lost so much art and so many good ideas because of the fact that they did that, you know. <clears throat> but again, there it's it's all a matter, you know, of getting in there and getting your butt in gear, getting the work done. So many people fail to do it. They start screaming about it. <clears throat> Excuse me. The industry hates me. The industry hates me. And then and they don't uh, do anything to change it. So get in there. Get off your keys, Drake. Get the work done. Be like our hero here. Get in there and get the job done. And then go home. So, I'm going to thicken up this curve a little bit for this muscle in the back here, these lats. We're going to keep it kind of smooth because it's the thick suit rolling up. Cool deal. He's coming along swimmingly. So, and I know I'm kind of puttering around with this a little bit. And that's that's okay. So I wanted to kind of take it easy with this and hang out for a bit and give you guys a little uh, example of the old uh, craft here so we can see what's up. But I don't want to take up all day, and we've been on about 30 minutes now. So I'm going to do a little more on this, and then I'll call it. 
Call it a day. And we'll move on. And I've got a couple of uh, card things lined up for you guys here fairly soon as well. So we'll get into that. Got a new card lineup coming up. That's going to be a riot. <clears throat> you guys are such a blast with that. It's always fun. Popping in the bottom of that chest line right there without overdoing it because it's crossing that white line into these stripes here. Cutting in that nice rib, li rib ridge. There we go. I can too, Chuck. I can. I can. <laughs> so, with this going in, I think this is going to be a good stopping point here. Now I'm going to go ahead and rib these out. And uh, we will wrap this up tomorrow with a little more... A little more detail probably on the coloring section. Um, I, I know, like I said, I kind of finished this one up without you guys getting to see all the detail go in. And uh, I know that's a disappointment. I've already heard. And I apologize for that. It's not my normal process. But I want to walk this one uh, at a timely pace just to get more of it done. Because I think I'm going to turn this into a, a wall hanging piece. Uh, I'm going to put the logo across the top and... Uh, you know, I'm going to print that on there. The I'm going to print on a, uh, a final version of the uh, Fighting American logo or banner up here. And uh, I think I'm going to color this one up. And I may even frame it. I might even frame it. This is one of my favorite pieces so far. And... Uh, I'm not sure where this one's going to go. Like I said, I might even frame it and keep it. But uh, it's a piece in the collection for sure. It's a good one to have. But anyway, that's it for today. I think I'm, like I said, I'm going to keep this short so that we can just um, show the process a little bit and not really string it along too much. Um, we've got a good start here. And as always with this, you guys know how it goes. Thank you for joining me so much. I appreciate it. Uh, much, much more to come with the how-to series that starts next week. Thank you very much. Um, then got some more training coming up and uh, more cool stuff for how to get your comics made and get them uh, in front of people and get them ordered ordered so you can make that uh oh what is that stuff um what is it green and black about this big oh money yeah so <laughs> as always this roller coaster we call life is a fun ride but we got to remember we got to stop and pause and smell the roses and make somebody laugh give somebody a hug show somebody that you know they matter and then stock it for the next generation man so go out and do your part until then, I'll see you later. Take care.